Hey, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com answering the questions I get from all around the world. Let's jump into it. This first question comes from Justin from Westminster, California. He says, hi, my question is, how did prehistoric sea reptiles get their water? Since most animals can't survive on salt water very long and sea reptiles actually lived in salt water, how did they get their water? Justin, that is a brilliant question. My best guess is they probably got their water the same way fish do, and that is they literally take in gulps of water and have the ability to sort of filter out the salt and expel it. If you've ever seen pictures of, uh, of uh, iguanas, marine iguanas, uh, on the Galapagos Islands, you'll see that they sort of sneeze. What they're doing is they're blowing out excess salt that their body is able to filter from the water. So my best guess would be that the giant swimming reptiles like the Mosasaurus, Plesiosaurus, and Ichthyosaurus probably did that exact same thing. They probably just took in drinks of water, had a way to filter out the salt, and expel the salt. It's a good question, man. All right, he says, P.S., my favorite dinosaur is Allosaurus too. Nice, Justin. Very nice choice of dinosaurs, my friend. Maybe that's why yours was put to the top of the list of questions. <laughs> okay, Ace from Pasig City, Philippines. He says, hi, Mr. Dinosaur George. Hey, Mr. Ace. Uh, do you know uh, Acrocanthosaurus and what it used its arms for? Well, yeah, I, I'm very familiar with Acrocanthosaurus. It was a big Texas dinosaur, or at least he lived here. A uh, very nasty guy. Those arms are big. He's got three massive claws on each hand. I have no doubt whatsoever that he used his arms and hands to catch and hold prey. He says one more thing. Who would win in a fight between T-Rex and Acrocanthosaurus? He says, has a, have a nice day, Gigi. Well, thank you, Ace. I hope you have a good day as well. Um, trying to determine a fight between something as big as Tyrannosaurus Rex and an Acrocanthosaurus, in my opinion, there wouldn't be much of a fight. Uh, first of all, they didn't live at the same time. Uh, T-Rex was a much more advanced dinosaur. So even though Acrocanthosaurus is a monster and terrifying, uh, I don't think he would stand a chance about uh, against something as big as, say, a Tyrannosaurus Rex. All right, this next question comes from, I think this is pronounced BG from British Columbia, Canada. Uh, it's spelled B-I-J-E, so I don't know if that's B-G or B-I-G, I'm not sure. But if you'll let me know um, how to pronounce it, I'll get it right the next time, I promise you. Um, he says, how, does paleo how do paleontologists really know how dinosaurs lived? You know, that is a very tough question. We don't always know how they lived. Uh, behavior is something that doesn't necessarily fossilize. I can find the bones of a giant animal, and I can tell you perhaps what size it was, and I can tell you what I think its diet consisted of, but I cannot necessarily tell you with certainty how it behaved. So. We don't really know how they lived, per se, but we certainly uh, can get clues from looking at it. Uh, if you live in a jungle-like environment, you have uh, very sharp teeth and you have big claws on your hand, that gives us a pretty good indication that you are a predator. Then by looking at modern animals, say something like a leopard, something that would live in that same environment, we can kind of, sort of, um, guess as to how the animal acted. Now, I'm not saying a dinosaur would crawl up in a tree and wait for something to walk underneath and jump on top of it. Uh, I mean, certainly the big ones couldn't, the medium and smaller ones may have been able to, but uh, the best thing we can do is look at modern animals, see the way they behave and the way they act, and then sort of apply that to similar creatures that lived a long time ago. All right, Ethan from Nexar Malta. Uh, Ethan is one of my friends on Facebook. It's always great to hear from you, Ethan. He says, hi, I got hooked on the computer to listen to your answers to various questions. And I have one of my own. Well, I'm sorry I got you hooked on uh, on watching these videos, but I'm glad to hear that you did. Um, he said, were there any iguanodontids living in South America? Thanks a lot. And I am, uh, and am I the first one writing from Malta? Well, yes, Ethan, you are the first person, I think, that's ever written to me from Malta. I don't recall anybody else writing to me from the island of Malta. So you are the number one fan from Malta, my friend. Um, is South America iguanodontids. Uh, Iguanodon was an incredibly successful dinosaur. He's been found everywhere in Europe, in the United States, or all over North America, not just the United States, all over North America. I believe Australia, at least there were iguanodontids there. Maybe not iguanodon, but iguanodontids there. Uh, in South America, to my best knowledge, I think all that's been found there were for, for some uh, 
were some footprints. Uh, I believe they found tracks uh, that were attributed to iguanodontids. So I have no doubt that they were there. I wouldn't be surprised if one day somebody doesn't find a, um, some real distinctive evidence. But I think iguanodontids lived literally from Antarctica to South America to Asia to Africa. I think these guys were worldwide. They were incredibly successful. And during their time, you could certainly walk from continent to continent and, and traverse the entire planet. Okay, finally, Luke from Wellington, Florida. Do you think that some sauropods and prosauropods may have been omnivores? Uh, maybe Platyosaurus. Um, well, Luke, I don't think any of the sauropods would have been um, omnivores simply because their body design just doesn't seem to be very well suited for being able to do anything about capturing anything alive. Um, uh, clearly, I think they were better suited simply for eating vegetation. Of course, we say that. We used to think animals like hippopotamus would never take in meat. And yet I've seen videos of hippopotamuses eating meat. So certainly it's possible that the big sauropods were omnivores. Now with prosauropods, I feel differently about that. I do believe, like you said, Platyosaurus may have been uh, omnivorous. Um, certainly I think it's possible. Uh, finally he says, was, Al was it Allosaurus that grew bigger than T-Rex and Giganotosaurus? Allosaurus itself did not grow bigger than those two dinosaurs that we're aware of. Now, it doesn't mean we found the biggest Allosaurus. We don't know. But there are some Allosaurids that appear to have been massively huge, perhaps even bigger than Giganotosaurus and Tyrannosaurus rex. The problem is they live so far before those two dinosaurs that the remains are harder to find. It's more difficult to find clear, distinctive evidence. Even though T-Rex lived 65 million years ago, well, the big Allosaurids lived twice that long ago in history, and therefore it's more difficult to find remains. So we know more about, say, Tyrannosaurus rex than we do about some of the gigantic Allosaurids like Saurophaganax or Epanterius. And yes, I know that there are some people that, that believe those two dinosaurs are one and the same, and it's certainly possible. All right, listen, um, if you've got a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page. We are now receiving upwards of a thousand questions a week from all around the world. And so, please, if you've written to me and I haven't been able to respond, uh, just keep trying. Uh, I wish I could answer every single question. I try my best, but honestly, there are only so many I can do in a day. So if you've got a question, go there. For you young people out there, make sure to continue to practice your reading. Uh, reading is incredibly important. I'm getting ready to go on a tour of Texas libraries. I'm speaking at 50 Texas libraries this summer during the months of June, July, and early August. So I'm going to be out there promoting reading. Uh, if you uh, go to my website, click on the... Um, page uh, listed as public appearances. And if you live in Texas, check and see if I'm coming to your area. And if I am, I'd love to see you at the library. Certainly come up and introduce yourself. Um, also, practice your manners, everybody. It's very important that we all use good manners. Until next time, take care, everybody. It's always great hearing from you. I will see you again soon.